Hello and welcome back to part 18 of my journey towards my Bachelor's of Science Information Technology degree from Western Governors University. So today's video is all about uh, two classes that I've just completed recently and they are Web Development Foundations, which is class number C779 and Web Development Applications, which is C777. So as the two names suggest, they are connected. They're both web development classes. The first one is the foundational class and the second one's like the more advanced application class. So I wanted to make sure that I did this, put them together in the same video. I actually completed the foundation class several weeks ago and only just completed the application class this past weekend. And the reason I wanted to do that was the application class I actually had quite a few issues with. Um, this is actually the first class that I took that I failed an objective assessment. So I felt it was really important to put them on the same video so I can give some hints and tips how best to complete these classes. And, um, and if you take my advice, I probably would recommend strongly that you do them back to back to give yourself the best chance to, 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 you know, to pass the classes. So web development and foundations. So class number C779. So as the name suggests, this is a foundation class for web development and it's not too bad. Now, um, I have created a website before and I have done a little bit of coding with uh, HTML. So I had a little bit of a head start maybe on some people, but uh, there was, it's been a long time since I've done it. So I did actually work through the material and to, to pass this class. And there is a lot of material, but to be fair, there's also um, a lot to cover. So this this is quite of a, another one of, it's almost like a comp tier exam. It's, a, it's very wide and quite narrow, but quite a lot of information in there. So um, if you're like me and you haven't really, you don't do this for a living, I would definitely look at the material. Otherwise you might struggle to pass the objective assessment. So this one class in all took me about five days um, before I was, you know, passed and uh, the objective assessment, but I did probably spend, you know, each of those five days, three, four hours looking through the material. So I probably put 15 to 20 hours of total work into this. So this isn't an easy gimme type class, which well, certainly wasn't for me, but um, isn't on that level. It is a foundational class, so it's it's not that difficult. So what does it cover? Well, there's two main areas, and that's just how they break it up in the, in the test. So 70% of the assessment is broken into like five or six key areas. Uh, that is a CSS free, um, HTML, uh, web forms, industry standards, and editors and mobile websites. So that's kind of like a 70% of the class. And then the next 30%, which is kind of like more the infrastructure side, which is developing and maintaining the website, end user web experience, and then the web service themselves is about 30%. So um, it kind of gives you an idea where you can focus if you're looking to try and get through this class pretty quickly. Obviously our first main grouping uh, will get you, know, get you the bulk of what you need to pass the class. Now, like I said, the material is pretty in depth and there's a lot of it. So as always, they have their chapter tests. Uh, they break it down for you. You know, you can go through those. And as, I, as always, they will test you as you work through it. Uh, there's flashcards. There's uh, lots of videos, which is which is quite good, especially on a subject like this. that can be quite boring for people coding, um, you know, uh, that kind of thing. There's a lot of videos that explain, you know, the different um, key areas. Uh, there's four practice tests. There's a prep engine, which I thought was quite good. I, I didn't really do too much of it, but there's 363 key terms that you can master using this prep engine. And it's kind of a system where they basically keep asking you the question until you kind of really master it in a different order. Um, I'm sure if you've done any of that before, you know what I'm talking about, but it's, uh, it can take a long time, but it, it really helps it sink into your mind kind of thing, almost imprints it in your head. Uh, there's pre and post assessments as always. And then there's a couple of exercises you can do, uh, like lab type situations, and then some appendices as well with a glossary of all the keywords, things like that. So the good news is what WGU provide is more than enough to pass this class. So you don't think you need to go to any external source um, to, to, to pass the class. Now, interestingly enough, this particular class used to get you a cert, which was the CIW Site Development Associate. Um, so this was one of those ones where you, you learned the material, then you had to go and test uh, um, uh, you know, an external site to get an exam, uh, sorry, a certificate, and then you'd pass the class. So that's no longer the case. Um, you just basically do all of it on WGU, use their objective assessment, but the material, as you can tell when you read through it, is definitely targeted towards that particular cert. So I'm guessing that if you really wanted to, you could probably out of pocket yourself, go and pay for that, um, to take that exam or that's, you know, to pass that cert and add that to your, you know, to your resume if you wanted to. Now I'd have no idea. <laughs> How much that cert is and if you do know please put it in the uh, in the in the in the chat there but 
but yeah, this is kind of all the materials kind of geared towards that particular cell. So the actual objective itself, objective uh, assessment itself was 70 questions. Uh, you get two hours, yeah, two hours to complete it. Uh, I took about 70 minutes or so. Fairly straightforward in terms of the, uh, you know, the type of questions you're going to get. They're, you're not going to get really in-depth questions. They're not going to expect you to code anything, but it isn't easy. I've got to admit, I mean, I, I passed, but I didn't exactly, you know, really score very high, but, uh, yeah, it, it is challenging. I would say the pre-assessment is a little easier than the objective assessment. So I would suggest that you definitely do well on the uh, the practice test and the pre-assessment before moving on. But if you've got any kind of HTML uh, development uh, experience, this is probably one that you can move on pretty much uh, straight away. So that's all I have for web development. Let's move on to the application class, which is a quite a different story. So web development application. So it's a carry on from the first one. So it's an advanced class. You do the foundation and then you move on to this one. Now, as I said in my notes earlier, I would really recommend that you do one class and then move straight into the other. I wouldn't take a break if I was you. And the reason why is they are very closely connected in terms of the material and why it's fresh in your mind. I would strongly encourage you to do back to back. So when you're planning your classes, when you're planning on doing these two classes, really look at a window where you can actually do that. Now, this class uh, is really focused on the development trifecta, the web development trifecta, which is basically HTML5, uh, CSS3, and then JavaScript. And these three kind of areas make up you know, what they call the web development trifecta. And it really goes into quite a lot of detail. Now, there's a lot of material to learn. And as you'd expect for six credit units, because this is what this class is worth, uh, it isn't easy. And um, especially for someone, like I said in my earlier, doesn't really have that much web development experience. I did struggle. Now, what I did is I followed the same process as I've done in all the other classes where I kind of went through the material, did the end of chapter tests, did the pre tests, you know, the uh, practice tests, and then basically went on to the objective assessment. Unfortunately, I didn't pass the objective assessment. Um, I missed it by, I don't know, maybe two or three questions. It's quite hard to tell sometimes, you know, with the way they score that, you know, on the, uh, on the coaching report. Um, there was a lot of questions on the objective assessment that I, I didn't know and I was guessing. And, you know, when you're in that situation, you are becoming a coin toss at that point, whether you get it right. And obviously I, I didn't guess enough right. So um, when you fail an objective assessment, um, they do make you do uh, like a, the professor reaches out basically and gives you like a study guide before they, they enable you to take it again. So my particular professor for this class gave me like a laundry list of things that he wanted me to do and prove to him that I'd done them before as they would have, he was finally, a, you know, let me take the objective assessment again. Now there was things like quizlets, there was some additional uh, um, exams to, to take, like practice tests, uh, there was videos to watch. Um, he strongly recommended that I went through the material again. He um, asked me to, to do the labs that I hadn't done during the original run, uh, which I hadn't done all of them. So there was a lot of work and in the end, I ended up spending a lot more time than I really, really wanted to. Uh, in fact, you know, probably twice as much time as the original leading up to the first test. So it was quite exhausting. And I really did, like I say, put way too much time into this class that I'd more than I wanted to anyway. But obviously I really learned the material at this point because I didn't want to fail again. And obviously it was disappointing the first time you fail. Now there is a, there is a rule of four. And if you look at the, um, the Reddit, forums and things like that there are people that basically don't mind failing objective assessments and it's part of their um part of their uh, strategy to, to get the degree quickly and uh, we can talk about that on another video but for me just failing this first one was kind of this just it was kind of like demoralizing i don't know worse because i'd work I, you know i'm working through this so hard and i do want to learn them too but it was i just i it hit me more than i thought it would just to fail one um, having that little red mark next to the test was kind of I don't know, it messed with me a little bit. So I really wanted to make sure I passed. So I did all the material they asked me to do. I worked through it. And like I said, there's a lot of material out there for you. The same as the first class is there's labs and practice tests and videos and all sorts of different things. So all the materials there. Uh, anyway, I took the um, objective assessment again over the weekend, this past weekend. I did pass. I got a pretty good score. I did way better than I did the first time. It was a completely different batch of new questions. So don't expect the same you know, exam. I'm sure there's a big pool of questions that they pull from. Um, there is 70 questions. They give you uh, 140 minutes. 
uh, to take the test. It's all multiple choice again, but it but it is tough. They'll ask you to look at code and um, to see what output might produce or what does this uh, you know you know how do you do this and how do you do that you know the different types of forms and things like that inputs and um, things like that. So it it is challenging. Um, so just like the first class, if you've got development web development experience, you you probably won't find this very difficult. But if you're like me. Um, with limited, you, you're probably going to have to work through it, but it can be done quickly. I mean, two weeks for six credit units is still pretty good if you think about it. But, um, like I say, if, if you don't want to redo this class, I would, uh, definitely spend the time to learn the material the first time around. And that way you wouldn't have to, you know, obviously do it a second or third of whatever time. So just like the foundation class, this class uh, was actually designed originally to get you the CIW specialist cert. So, you know, um, they don't longer do that. Again, it's all done through WDU and their uh, objective assessment to pass. But if you feel like that you're ready to do that after learning all the material, you could certainly go ahead and then I'd think go ahead and take that exam and get yourself that cert. So it's a shame that WDU doesn't offer that as part of you know this particular degree program anymore, but you've got the knowledge if you pass this class to then go ahead, like I said, and take the ex uh, exam externally. But of course, uh, you're, you're uh, then um, going to be out of pocket because it's going to be your money that you're going to have to spend to then take the exam. But you know, if you've got the um, no knowledge at that point, then why not? You could uh, with the two classes, you could add uh, two uh, quality recognised certs to your to your resume. So certainly worth considering. Um, once you once you complete the classes. So anyway, so between the two classes, though, if you look at it, nine credit units down, which actually puts me at sixty nine percent through my degree program. So I am moving through, but uh, a little disappointed. Now I made so many notes on this class; it's not even funny trying to practice and learn it. Also, I have some really good, really good uh, uh, notes for this class. But that's all I have for today. Um, I'm sorry it's been a couple of weeks since I put a video out, but as I can say, um, I wanted to make sure I put these two classes together to give you the big picture. But so um, hope you're staying well, take care out there, and I'll speak to you soon. All right, bye now.